Alright guys, in today's video we have some more PlayStation 5 information to go over and discuss here and I think you guys are going to be pretty interested in this because we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5's AMD Smart Shift technology, what exactly does it do, and even more importantly, what is it going to do for PlayStation 5 games? This is something that Mark Cerny did touch upon during the deep dive specification reveal. However, I came across an article that breaks it down pretty well and tries to simplify it and basically let us know what is this going to do for PS5 games and it sounds really cool so I wanted to take some time to talk about this I also want to take some time to talk about something a graphics engineer over at Intel had to say recently about the PlayStation 5's specifications they had some pretty good things to say so we're going to talk about all this but before we go any further do me a favor leave the video a like and hit the subscribe button as well if you don't want to miss any future content but it says PS5 AMD Smart Shift support confirmed what does it do Given Mark Cerny's insistence that the architecture of the PS5 was designed to be lean, efficient, and intelligent, it makes sense that the console supports an efficiency-giving technology like AMD Smart Shift. Essentially, AMD Smart Shift works like this, by allowing the PS5 CPU and GPU to use power from a shared resource budget. Developers have the ability to shift performance from one to the other in order to optimize the final result. What does AMD Smart Shift mean for PS5 games? In practical terms, this means that whereas the clocks in the Xbox Series X are fixed, with PlayStation 5, developers can refocus power and frequency whenever it is needed or wherever it is needed. If a PS5 title is dealing with intensive visual processing tasks such as ray tracing and primi primitive shaders, developers can, for example, opt to reroute some of the unused power from the CPU over to the GPU, resulting in much better performance than the specifications would otherwise indicate on paper. Likewise, if a PS5 title would ordinarily find itself bottlenecked somewhat by the PS5's Zen 2 CPU, AMD Smart Shift allows developers to perform the shift power in uh, the other direction as well, again achieving the desired result of a much more optimized title than one might have initially assumed would be possible. Again, having a cutting edge optimization technology like AMD Smart Shift in the PlayStation 5 makes a lot of sense, since rather than going for the brute force approach as Microsoft has done with its Xbox Series X console, Sony have very much sought to design a console that does more with what it has while potentially driving down the final consumer cost of the PlayStation 5 in the process. So there you go. This is a pretty, I think, simplified explanation of what exactly this smart shift technology is inside of the PlayStation 5. And it does sound really cool. And I think the most important thing that the article does highlight here is that it really does do a good job in kind of pointing out what the PlayStation 5 is all about. It truly is about optimizing. It's getting more out of less. And Sony is implementing cutting edge technology that AMD is offering to essentially do that. And it's interesting because I've always kind of had this mindset, even back before we knew the PlayStation 5 specifications, when there was all the T-flop talk going around, I've always had the mindset that whatever Sony was going to do, they were going to try and achieve something that could potentially punch above its weight class, right? And I think that's what we're going to see with the PS5. That's not me saying that the Xbox Series X is not going to have any type of advantage or that it's completely useless, that it has all this raw power and it can brute force things because, of course, it's going to have its own set of distinctive advantages. However, I think what Sony's trying to do here certainly indicates that they're trying to basically blur the line between what could be possible with a lesser console and you know the ultimate result is being able to see things achieved that you on paper thought couldn't be achieved while maintaining a potentially cheaper price point and I think that's what the PlayStation 5 is all about and honestly I'm all for that it's it's really interesting to see the approach that Sony is taking with the PlayStation 5 and so the other thing I want to talk about here is what a graphics engineer Intel had to say I'm going to do my best to pronounce their name Dietmar Selch, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, I'm probably butchering this individual's name, but they are in fact a graphics engineer at Intel, and it says here that talking about the console's technology reveal on his Twitter page, Selch said that Sony has made some very smart and sensible choices with their design 
of the PS5's architecture. He mentioned the console's SSD as well, calling its improvements impressive, but also long overdue, while also mentioned that its GPU improvements are great, but also expected. He too went on to mention the console's audio engine, Tempest, saying that he's stoked for the possibilities. And so I wanted to highlight this because there are other developers, I will say, that are not being so pos positive towards the PlayStation 5. I think there was actually a, Guerrilla, a former Guerrilla Games developer who was saying that he was hearing that the power difference between the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X is huge and whatever. But I don't know. I'm hearing just as many developers expressing their excitement for the PS5, saying how not only is it really easy to develop for, but Sony did a really good job in removing all of the bottlenecks. And I have seen a few developers actually express some serious excitement about this Tempest audio engine, which we haven't talked about too much on the channel here. And I think that's just because naturally it's easier to sell people on graphics and get them excited about what they're going to see visually and kind of what you're going to hear audio wise is kind of an afterthought but it is really cool that sony is putting a lot of emphasis on this and they have a dedicated audio chip inside of the playstation 5 and we have a graphics engineer here who is actually pretty excited about that granted he didn't really elaborate I believe there are other developers that have elaborated why they're so excited, and maybe we will cover that in the future. But this is just, you know, more evidence that there is a lot of support behind the PlayStation 5. And at the end of the day, I think Sony knows what they're doing. I, at this point, I'm just waiting for them to talk more about next generation or maybe start ramp up the marketing towards their upcoming games like The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. But I thought that this was some really cool stuff. I mean, we have some really interesting and efficient uh, optimization technology that the PlayStation 5 is using that is clearly going to do some great things for games. And I think the most important thing that people need to understand before I end this video is that a lot of the technology that both Sony and Microsoft are implementing in their next generation consoles, we don't really know exactly what to expect. We can assume and we can listen to what developers are saying, which universally we're hearing good things about both consoles, which is great. But it's really just going to come down to what we end up seeing at the end of the day. As I always say, and I will continue to say, the proof is in the pudding. So once we see games, once we see comparisons, and once we finally get our hands on it, we will know for sure what exactly this technology is capable of doing when it comes to games. And I, I have a really optimistic feeling that for both consoles, everybody's going to be very surprised at what the results are are going to be. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Leave it a like if you enjoyed it or found it informative. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.